Gorgao was the home kingdom's capital from 1540 AD till 1698 AD. In 600 years of Ahom Kingdom's reign, Gorgao was the most eventful capital. Gorgao was built by Suklenmung, accused of assassinating his father, Suhungmung. Suhungmung was one of the most powerful Ahom kings who ruled for 42 years before being assassinated. The father-son duo had led many of the military conquests and led to rapid territorial expansion. Suklenmung succeeded Suhungmung to the throne in 1540 AD and shifted to Gorgao to purge from the accusations of regicide and also fearing his own safety. Gor means fort in Assamis. Gorgao was heavily fortified and was impenetrable even by cannon shells. Heavily fortified with two layers of ramparts surrounded by waterfield moats and only three entry points. Moving ahead, this is the historic Todar Ali Road, 350 years old, built in 1687 AD. It is 212 kilometers long, built by the Ahom King Kodadhar Hingha. On the right side of this road, we can see a waterfield moat beyond which lies the rampart, which constituted of a very thick and thorny variety of bamboo, the Kutuha Ba. And now we are entering the Gorgao Royal Township through Bordeaux. This is Gorgao Karenkar, the Home Raja's palace. The residential and administrative center for more than a century. It is seven storied. With four floors above the ground, and three underground floors.
This Corridors This Chambers These Passageways And these pillars ahead Happy Newtness To numerous events through centuries I got inspired to revisit the pages of history I went back to the year 1562 AD when the legendary military general and commander-in-chief of his elder brother and coach king Narnarayan's army Suklotwaj popularly known as Chilarai The Kite Prince had led the Koch army across the river Brahmaputra and attacked the Ahom kingdom and managed to occupy the capital Gorgao. Surprised by the stealth attack in the darkness of the night. The then Ahom king Sukhampa the son of Suklenmung escaped through one of the underground tunnels of this palace. Later, a truce followed between the two kingdoms. Exactly hundred years later, Mir Zumla, the Nawab of Bengal, advanced along the river Brahmaputra with a fleet of 323 ships and boats, whereas his cavalry of 12,000 men an infantry of 30,000 men marching along the northern and southern bank of Brahmaputra towards the Ahom capital Gorgao. It was the first and only time ever the Mughals had entered so far of the strategically placed capital Gorgao. The Ahom king Joy was Singhaw, after lots of deliberation with his novels, had no other choice but to evacuate Gorgao and take safe refuge in Soraikurum, Namru. which was inaccessible due to hostility reign. Having captured Gorgao, 
within six weeks. May Jumla's enthusiasm. However, soon gave away to dismay. As in the succeeding months, the lashing rains, waterborne diseases, and frequent guerrilla attacks saw the Mughal troops unused to such a terrain perishing. Mir Zumla was desperate to return back. Much to his relief, the Treaty of Khilajari Ghat was signed in January 1663 AD in Deepam. The terms of the treaty were very harsh on the Ahom Kingdom. Very soon, Joy Thwa Singha died with a deep sense of disgrace and humiliation. Chakrathwa Singha, the great grandson of Suhungmu, ascended the throne with a singular purpose of restoring the lost glory and wresting back control from the Mughals. With foresightedness, planning a series of standoffs finally culminated to the historic Battle of Sorai in 1671 AD. A unique battle of its kind fought over the river Brahmaputra. The Mughal troops were defeated by the superb military acumenship of Commander-in-Chief of Ahum forces Lachit Barfukan. Lachit Barfukan's valiant victory against a mighty military force to protect his land became the stuff of legends. He became an Assamese national hero. His valiant trail is timeless and his defense against a formidable force is a classic case study in military strategy. Another final standoff happened in which the Mughals were defeated and Manos River was agreed to be the boundary. Meanwhile, the period after the Battle of Soraighat saw extreme political instability with nobles vying for control, leading to kings becoming mere pawns. Seven kings died from unnatural causes in a mere span of 12 years. It was Godatar Hingho's ascension in 1681 AD that brought the much-needed political stability to the kingdom, establishing the rule of the Tungkungya clan of the Ahom kings that ruled the Ahom kingdom till its climactic end in 1826 AD. Godadar Hingho also recovered Gohati in 1682 AD from the Mughals once and for all. Godadar Hingha was buried in Soraidu in 1696 AD in all the pomp and the glory with his burial tomb, that is Tamoidam, measuring 
up to a height of 90 feet, befitting the scale and the grandeur of its achievements. He was succeeded by his son Rudra Hingha, whose reign brought a new era for the kingdom. A patron of arts culture, he encouraged diplomatic exchanges with kingdoms far and wide. He also commissioned civil works and the construction of the new royal capital Rangpur at the very place where Tolatal Ghar, previously the military garrison of the kingdom was. In memory of his mother Joymotis supreme sacrifice for her husband Godadar Hingho and the country, he constructed the Joy Hagar Lake. The royal capital was officially shifted to Rangpur in 1698 AD, whose remnants are in the form of Tolatol Ghar, Ranghar, Joy Hagar Lake, Hibodol, and numerous other buildings. I headed towards the Rangpur Palace. At a distance of uh, 16 kilometers and 40 minutes drive, from Gorgao. It was a beginning of a new chapter of the Ahom Kingdom. Ahom Kingdom entered the 18th century with Rangpur as the new capital. Rangpur is a part of present-day Siv Sagar. A palace that is mired with intrigue and secrets. The Rangpur Palace was seven storied with three underground floors. and four floors above the ground. The king's court right in front of me where the king used to sit along with his council of ministers and advisors. On top of this long terrace, there were two more floors supported by wooden columns along the edge of this terrace. I 
I moved towards the ground floor. Appreciating these pillars. These walls. These arched door entrances. Which used to be guarded with heavy wooden doors. Beneath this floor, there were underground basements which was in the form of a maze which was convoluted labyrinthine where the uninitiated can lose their way there were the rooms of kings and queens in the first second and third floors Our guide told us that on the right side is the way to the cellar from where the king used to escape through a secret tunnel 16 kilometers long to Gorgao Karenghar. Hi, uh, so this is the ground floor where uh, the servants and the army used to, uh, the army barracks as well. And uh, there are three floors beneath it. Uh, entry to which has been set up by the East India Company and uh, we'll now make our way to the, the royal palace uh, where the, the royals used to stay. We have the rooms of the kings and the queens also over here. Over the next few days I spent more time in the Rangpur palace. I went through the pages of history reading through obscure text trying to gather information. The more the time I spent, I felt the whole palace becoming alive with life, with their stories. It was also with extreme delight that I became an unofficial guide to some of the tourists who saw me in this palace wrapped in attention along the corridors and the alleys. Hi, a very warm good evening, uh, friends. Uh, immense joy, I welcome you to the historic uh, Sipsagar. Right now, we are in Rockford Palace. This place was the capital of Yahoo for around 30 years, from 1698 to 1796, when the nation came to To the northeast of this palace lies the Ranghar, the royal amphitheater built in the year 1746 AD by the then Ahom king Ramatohinga. As I approached the Ranghar, the path was adorned with beautiful salvia flowers in red, purple, white and various other hoos. I also momentarily paused to gaze at the rooftop shaped in the form of an inverted boat vessel probably signifying the prowess of the Ahum military in the water. And just like the kings, queens, and the royals. I stepped forward to take part in the festivities and the celebrations.
while looking at the engravings on the walls on both the sides i felt transported back into time I gazed to the arched opening of Rangar towards the adjoining Rupohi Pathan where fun filled sports and cultural extravaganza used to be held wrestling bull fighting elephant fighting and also the celebrations of Bihu which is still held in the month of april every year in this rupohi pathan even though i was walking in the present I felt transported navigating through the past From Ranghar I headed towards Hibadol built in the year 1734 AD by Borosa Ombika the queen of the Ahom king Hibohinga located at the very heart of Hibohagar town with the golden crown in the form of a kalasha towering at a height of 32 meters from the ground he was dole in which the local residents and tourists throng to seek the blessings of the lord in the banks of borpukuri i was fortunate to witness a duck take a leap into the water and head towards its own destiny as i peered into the water it was brimming with life the jafir a fresh cool breeze the vast expanse of water and total surrender to the small joys of life towards fate onto a power higher than ourselves As darkness beckoned the sound of the gong bells was soothing to the ears
through the arched passageway of the Garbhagriha of this Hibadal. I suddenly felt empty, purged from all thoughts of yore. I felt timeless, as if everything has turned to stand still. I headed back towards Gorgao, through the very road to Dharali, built by Godadhar Hingho in 1687 AD. I was very much well aware that the period of Rangpur was a start of another era with its own set of challenges that deserve a standalone revisit. But it was Gorgao which was built by Suklain Mung after his father Suhung Mung's controversial assassination. It was Gorgao that had withstood both the highs and the lows in a tumultuous period with external conflicts that had jolted and shaken the foundations of the kingdom. Nam ki? Akoi bar ko? Kun class 